Hi, and welcome to me screaming into the void, mostly about books. I have a almost lifelong love with William Shakespeare, having tripped over his work almost by accident when I was about 10, 11. And I've, of course, started loving his more youthful works like Romeo and Juliet, that was the first play I read. But if you're going to ask me my favourite play by William Shakespeare, it has to be Love's Labour's Lost. Uh, this is a play that is becoming more known, luckily, but is still yet one of William Shakespeare's lesser known plays. And in some sense, that is deserved and yet not deserved. And when I see that, uh, when I say that it is in some ways deserved, I don't mean because of the quality, but because it is some of his more challenging work and it also is one of his more grown-up work. So it's absolutely uh, correct that Love's Labour's Lost isn't a part of his, of the popular William Shakespeare zeitgeist that everyone knows about William Shakespeare, like, for example, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Macbeth, Much Ado But Nothing is. They are more accessible works and therefore it's more understandable and also fair that they are part of that. And this isn't. This is for people who want to read more William Shakespeare after the first introduction. Um, and one of the things that I really love about it is that it is so grown up and is so uh, complex. Yes, it has a lot of uh, sex jokes. Yes, it has a lot of uh, jokes on people's expense. Uh, but what uh, one of the things I really enjoy about Love's Labour's Lost is how the jokes are very intrinsic and more structural rather than one-offs, even though he has the one-offs in this one as well. And Love's Labour's Lost is probably the play that best illustrates that William Shakespeare today has become ironic. <laughs> and when I'm seeing that William Shakespeare has become ironic is that when you want to woo someone today, when you want to uh, impress them with flowery language, William Shakespeare in English speaking and Western uh, part of the world is very often the go-to guy. If you want to sort of impress someone, you'll just drop us on it. And uh, Love's Labour's Lost is a play where William Shakespeare, more than anything, states that don't be a twat and use flowery language when you can just speak plainly. And one of the way he illustrates this is the way he switches up Demeter. So when the king and the princess, okay, uh, plot first. The story is about a princess visiting a king and she has three uh, ladies in waiting and he has three buddies <laughs> and they all fall in love with each other. But the king has sworn with his three buddies that they should not touch a woman in three years because they're going to focus on study. So Wooing is a problem because uh, they sort of promised that they weren't going to do the wooing. So they, so the, the comedy is that he 
he has to pretend that he's not woo wooing, even though everyone can clearly see that he is wooing. And this is one of the things where where Shakespeare illustrates that pretending to woo using uh, sort of flowery language rather than just stating plainly uh, what do you want to say has to do with the meter. So uh, when the, the prince and the king talks uh, uh, during the whole courtship phase, you have the very classic iambic pentameter, da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. Uh, but when you have um, sort of the folksy characters, the sort of the true characters, they just speak plainly, so they aren't sort of hindered by the meter. And what Shakespeare is then illustrating with this is, of course, that this is the true way to speak. This is the proper way to speak. Speaking using flowery language is just making an ass of yourself. And that's what I mean with uh, the fascination with this play that so illustrates how William Shakespeare has become ironic. And there is another way that this play has become kind of ironic, and that is to do with the one film that has been made of Love's Labour's Lost, and that is Kenneth Branagh's version of Love's Labour's Lost. Now, there is... Um, uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company has done... Uh, they've taped one of their performance of Love's Labour's Lost, which is absolutely brilliant, and I can't recommend it enough. Uh, if, if you're going to watch Love's Labour's Lost, that is one you, you should watch. I also know that there is a, a taped version from BBC's in, I think, the 70s or 80s or 90s, which is pretty much people walking in, sitting down and just saying the text and walking out and someone else comes in, sits down, saying the text. You don't need to watch that one. But the problem and almost the ironic uh, thing with Kenneth Branagh's Love's Labour's Lost is that uh, he has done uh, a musical out of the play based on an article written about how Love's Labour's Lost and Shakespeare in general has a very musical quality over him. That's fine. Uh, William Shakespeare absolutely has a, a very musical perspective of him because he does write in meter as most music does. Uh, and he does write sonnets and poems that are very easily translated into uh, music. So there's nothing wrong with thinking, oh, William Shakespeare will do a musical. West Side Story kind of proves that concept can work. What Kenneth Branagh did was make a musical where he talked about the Shakespeare basics. So, for example, he has a scene where he tap dances. It, and even just the idea of connecting William Shakespeare with music, even if it is a jukebox musical, everything about that speaks, uh, I have to present William Shakespeare to someone who doesn't know William Shakespeare. And you don't watch Love's Labour's Lost, you don't read Love's Labour's Lost, as your 
introduction to Shakespeare. That's not recommended. As I said before, this is for uh, people who have already read the basics and want to read more of William Shakespeare. And the problem is that he takes then a concept, and there are several concepts in his uh, film that works, both turning Love Labour's Lost into musical, where he could have put music to the text and made them into songs, which absolutely would have worked, or he could have made a Shakespeare play into a jukebox musical to illustrate and talk about how uh, the languages that we are using today are relevant based on what uh, was introduced by William Shakespeare, sort of bridged the gap. Someone who did do that, surprisingly enough, is Baz Luhrmann, who made Romeo plus Juliet. And Romeo plus Juliet is 19th Zeitgeist, and he kept the original text, but made it work because it's such a 90s historical concept. It probably didn't work in the 90s, but it works today because the 90s is, not, is now so far back that it becomes almost a historical play in and of itself because it's based in the 90s. Yes, we've now all become that old. Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and plus Juliet also works because it's Romeo plus Juliet. Romeo plus Juliet is an introductory play. It's one of the first plays that you read and watch, and therefore having something that is that aesthetically clear into a specific concept works when trying to translate um, William Shakespeare to a modern audience. So the problem then becomes when watching Love's Labour's Lost by Kenneth Branagh is that when he tries to do the same things that Baz Luhrmann does, which isn't capturing the 19th zeitgeist, but trying to translate William Shakespeare to a modern audience and the language that a modern audience will know and understand, it doesn't work because it's love's labor's lost because i don't need hand holding in tran in translating the re relevance of love's labor's lost as i needed help understanding romeo and juliet when i was a teenager and that is also one of the things i sort of makes Romeo plus Juliet even more relevant because I was a teenager in the 90s and therefore I remember the sort of being a teenager in the 90s in the same sense that the play is a, a way of highlighting and asking grown-ups to take teenagers seriously. That works because it's Romeo and Juliet. It is a novice play. So <laughs> Kenneth Branagh's play with Love's Labour's Lost then almost becomes ironic because you're trying to highlight one of his more complex plays by talking down to your audience. And had I not already read the play and loved the play before watching the film, I don't know if I actually would want to read the play afterwards. So trying to make that film because you're dumbing it down, ironically, harms the play. So, William Shakespeare's Love's Labour's Lost, his most ironic play, sadly. Thank you for listening to me screaming into the void.